One nice thing about the curtain vise is the movable jaws. And uh, we've, we've made a special wrench here. This is sim simply a regular Allen wrench that has been cut off a little bit. And you can see why. I'm going to remove these jaws for right now. We can put this in here and turn it like this. And the, the wrench a little bit, being a little bit shorter makes it easier to get in here as well. So uh, let me take these, these jaws out. And uh, I'll show you a few tricks. Now these jaws are movable. And uh, for clamping wider objects, you can actually move this jaw back here. And you can you know, just bolt it down the same way. Um, you can uh, I'll do that. Be so temporary. And this jaw is also it's movable back here. So you can see that you could clamp an incredibly wide piece of material if you set them up this way. Now one thing to keep in mind though is that if you clamp a wide piece of material that there's not very much distance from the top of the jaw to here. So if you're going to have to drill a hole in this area uh, you'll have to come up with something a little bit different because you could very well drill into the vise. So uh, one thing you can do that gives you a little bit more room to work with is if you turn the jaw over they'll actually mount up a little bit higher. See how that, I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, this particular jaw will now sit quite a bit higher. Now because it's not sitting down on the device floor itself, it's not going to be, this surface up here is not going to be uh, precisely aligned. So don't use that for alignment. But you can, with this mount, you can maybe put, oh, I don't know, maybe as much as a quarter inch spacer to get you up there to where you could perhaps drill safely. But be careful. The best thing to do perhaps would be to make some soft jaws. And let's take a look at some soft jaws. I'll set the, the hard jaws aside. Soft jaw is simply a chunk of aluminum or a mild steel, something like this, that uh, has the holes drilled to fit the device. And, and the truth is, is if you don't have to bring the jaws up tight against one another, you really don't need this, this counter bore. But generally, it's a half inch hole through there with a three quarter inch counter bore <coughs> will fit these, uh, will fit these uh, screws pretty well. And, uh, so we could put a, a soft jaw in there. Soft jaws, you can, you can make any size you want, any height, any width. We'll have some wide ones here in a minute. And I won't bother putting all the screws to save time. But uh, you see, I, this one I could actually put the screws in <clears throat> without the counter bore. Oops. You see, and they would they'd stick out a little bit, but that if you're doing a wider object, it wouldn't matter. Um, so with the counter bore, of course, they can be flush. And uh, I'll put this one in here temporarily anyway. And uh, you can see these have a, a ridge cut. This particular set of soft jaws already has some, has had some machining done to it to act as a, a way of grabbing something. See, like, I was use this jaw as an example. We 
Okay, see how that is? It's a very shallow, um, uh, for woodworkers, that would be a, uh, a rabbit <laughs> cut in there. And uh, we can grab things even as large as this. The nice thing is, is that we could work on a, a very thin part, maybe even only a sixteenth of an inch thick by doing this. And also, since these jaws are machinable, you can see a slot that was cut in here. So this would allow us to make a cut off the side of our, our workpiece that's in there. So this gives you a lot of, of flexibility. We've got some soft jaws in there and you can make your own. Out of the, these were just made out of scraps of aluminum. You can see there's other holes and things in it. And they're left over from, from uh, where they had been used before. Now these soft jaws are, you know, six inches or so wide, about the same width as a standard jaw. But one of the nice things about making soft jaws is that sometimes you work on wide parts, long parts that need some good support. And uh, there's some soft jaws here that these were made years ago. I was making uh, handles for big electronic equipment. And uh, I needed a way to holding the long handle and being able to machine it, a cutout for your hand in the middle of that handle. So uh, this was a good way of doing it. You can make these soft jaws, I said you can make them 24 inches wide if, uh, if that suits your needs. So you can see I would, I could put a very long work piece in there and you can see the groove in here where I could come in and cut my, my, uh, the handle I was making at the time. But anyway, these are here in a maker space and, and you're welcome to make use of these. And uh, now a few hints about machining these. I'll tighten this up a little bit more. Uh, a few hints about machining. When you machine these things, always use something to uh, preload. You know, on the shorter ones, you could get by with a one, two, three block right here in the middle and machine these things. And that will ensure that this jaw is parallel with this jaw. And and in a good tight position so you can machine it without any chatter. Now if I was doing a longer one, I might want to use two, a pair of one, two, three blocks, one on each end, and I might use something to support it. Um, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, <clears throat> maybe something like a longer piece of material here to support the one, two, three blocks out here. And I might put some clamps out here as well. In fact, when you're using this, sometimes you want, might want to put clamps out here if, if you're using a, a, a wide pair of soft jaws to hold your object. And also, you know, of course, use the one, two, three blocks when you're machining this groove. And um, one, you'll find that uh, you can uh, use uh, soft jaws for for holding round material, sometimes you have a something that you want to position the same place all the time. Take the soft jaws, uh, space them out, however, whatever space you want to operate them, and then bore the the hole that was except the part, and then uh, <clears throat> and then just you know set your partner, and it'll be in the same same identical place every time. So if you want to do a Hundred parts are all identical. You can set them all in the same place. It's, it's a it's great make it repeatable with a, and a, you can solve some very tricky uh, clamping problems using soft jaws. Sometimes you need to use the step clamps. We have a, a kit of step camp clamps, and uh, it consists of several parts. Uh, you'll notice in the kit that we have basically three different sizes of clamps and uh, several different sizes of studs. Uh, we have uh, different sizes of step blocks and uh, show you these parts. Um, first of all, I guess it would be the T-nut. 
this T-nut is what fits down inside the T-slots on the milling machine. And uh, if you look at a stud, quite often you'll see a stud with a short thread on this end and a longer thread on this. The short end should be put into the T-nut, and then it can be slid, slid I'm sorry, into the, uh, the T-slot. Now, as you can see here in this setup, we've got the T-slot. Behind it, we've got a step, uh, step block. These step blocks are interesting because you can use them like this or you can actually use them like this. And here's the actual clamp. I'll get a bigger one. Here's a bigger one. You see, all have notches. And it'll sit in a step block like this. And they'll actually grab. They're at a little bit of an angle, so they actually grab in there pretty well. Or if you want to, you can do it set up like this. And then your work pieces out here. Uh, you want these as parallel to the surface as possible. And then all oh, this follows up with a flange nut, by the way. Uh, sometimes if you don't have enough thread there, you can take a smaller step clamp, put it on top. Anyway, uh, try to make these as flat as possible. And you notice on this particular setup, I put aluminum shims between the table and the and the, the block and the workpiece and the and the clamp. The reason is is that these clamps and these blocks are very hard and they can damage actually damage the table or, or put little dings, especially if you're working with a piece of aluminum, you know, cylinder head or something like that. Uh, you want to use something soft there and then uh, tighten them down pretty good. Now, when you tighten these things, this wrench is big enough don't use a big old wrench. The reason is is that you can actually tighten it up to the point where you pull the, the uh, step clamp uh, through the uh, T-slots, actually break and crack the table, or at least you might put a bulge there, which would be a problem later on, because remember, this table is our index surface. But uh, <clears throat> another big rule about using uh, step clamps like this is always use at least two clamps. One clamp, if you try to use one clamp, you may cut it out here and, and let's say with just, just this clamp here, it'll rotate because the truth is, is that it really only makes contact in one place. It's pushing down, it's not holding it side to side that well, so, uh, or it's not holding it to keep it from rotating all that well. So. That's one of the uh, things they have to be careful of with the step clamps. Also, you'll notice on this particular setup, since uh, perhaps I was going to drill a through hole, underneath it I put parallels. I put the large parallels, and in this case I laid them on their side, but um, there's a large parallel, and it stepped it up off the table so that I could do things to this workpiece and, and uh, drill holes through that sort of thing without worrying about damaging the table. Of course, you have to keep in mind that the, that the parallels are there too, so don't you know you don't want to drill a hole through your parallel either. But um, that's about it for the step blocks. I mean, they're they're handy and uh, they can be used in situations. Um, here's a, here's a, the long one. Believe it or not, that this has coupling nuts that allow you to, to, to make them even longer so <laughs> um, you could work on some really tall objects and clamping them down with this but uh, again probably <clears throat> the two most important rules of course is always use at least two clamps and never tighten a clamp over tighten a clamp to where you could actually damage the table all right i think that's pretty much does it for the whole clamping techniques uh, work holding techniques we need for the mill. Um, if you have any more questions, be sure to contact me. I, I would be glad to help you out. Uh, uh, again, uh, be, be careful. Uh, make sure your materials are clamped firmly, yet not to the point where you're distorting the material. Um, and uh, just, you know, be careful with the mill. Please don't drill any holes in the table. Just pay attention to what you're doing, and I think you'll be just fine. It's uh, people have been doing this for a long time. 
Anyway, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. I hope it was uh, uh, useful to you. And uh, let's make some chips. Thanks.